right, guys? So today, I want to talk jerk baits. I'm going to do a little bit of fishing out here, and then uh, probably head back to the house and do the actual discussion. But for what it's worth, I'm on Thomas Lake. Water's pretty chilly. Temp is in the high 50s. It's an overcast day, cold front, and this guy is hooked good. So, anyway, jerk baits. This is topic. It's not the pair I was looking for, but yeah, it'll do. So, guys, the keys with jerk baits is that every movement starts on a slack line, right? Yeah. So you snap. It. Dad, I'm talking to the camera. That's why I said guys. <laughs> Alright, so every movement starts with slack line, right? Notice I'm not reeling the bait in, okay? I'm snapping it. You want slack line to do all the work for you. You lose contact with the lure quite a bit in between snaps, for example. That's why it's imperative to have super sticky hooks. You need that fish to hook himself. You watch, you'll notice I'm not reeling much. I just bombed that cast. There's not much reeling that happens. The reason slack line's so important with a jerk bait is because when you snap it like that, it's causing it to dart and then kind of kill for a second. And then you snap it again and it darts another direction. If you're just casting and reeling, it's basically just a long crankbait then. And since the fish is going to hit this while you're dead sticking it, right, when it's sitting still, that's why super sticky hooks are imperative. There we go. Ah, you just bit it. Bad hook set. Now I'm reeling a little more than I should be, but that's because I'm driving forward at the same time. I got to take up some of that slack. Now the cadence. You can pop it one time, two times, three times, as many as you want. That's totally up to you. Now in the wintertime, guys, this is spring right now, but in the wintertime, you may have to let that thing sit you know, five, eight, ten seconds between snaps. When you're, when you're Talking to the camera, Dad. <laughs> I had a feeling this was going to happen. Uh, like the day that I did the Walmart challenge, and like every fish, you were like, is that off one of your new lures? And I'm like, yes, Dad. The whole video will be using these lures. Next fish, is that off one of your new lures? It's all right. Days like this, right? It's kind of—it's a little breezy. It's not incredibly windy, but it's a little breezy. Jerk baits have that that long, narrow body, making great baits for throwing in the wind. You can still make good casts because most of them have a weight transfer system. This one, being a rearrange. You can't hear it when, when I cast, it sounds like my line snaps. That's the weight shifting positions. And then when I start working it, it moves back to regular position. Spot guys. There we go. Steam in.
one thing that makes me nervous about all these hooks on a jerk bait is a fish flopping and me getting stuck. toad by any means but still a nice fish regardless Here we go, guys. He's an inch bigger than the last one. The jerk, jerk bait again too, right? Yep. Nice. He's almost 14, guys. spot lock. Yeah, what? There's a... Oh, so you, so you lock... Or you know. There's a thing that the big boys all have called spot lock. Another little one. That, uh, that basically you 
tap the button, and your trolling motor will hold you in this place. There's a little one. Oh, he's barely hooked. Yeah. Maybe not. He had two of the troubles. This is one of them color changing baits, John. Smart baits? Yeah. Say anything about that. There's a Kentucky spot. Okay. I see. I don't even see where that landed, but now I did. Oh, there we go. Get him. Yep. There you was. That little white crankbait, the or jerk bait, works good here. Too, man. Top of the mouth, two hooks. I think he can jump as much as he wants. He wasn't coming out. He was hooked good. All right, 12 and a quarter. 12 and a quarter. A little large mouth. That's it guys, jerk baits are deadly. Been throwing the same jerk bait the whole time we've been out here for about well probably less than two hours. Here we go. Came off. Bad hook set. Alright, that's two in a row that I've lost. Let me check these hooks. Yeah, they're still sticky. So how do you sharpen them? You got something to sharpen? I do, but I would probably just swap them out. I don't have something to sharpen them with. Me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I do have other hooks. With me. It stings though, that's for sure. Right in the knuckle. As we come back to this uh Swapped out GoPros, retied because the line was a little frayed, and I don't want to lose it. There we go. skinny little fish. It is very skinny. Pulled it out of my hand. Let's get in here. Looks like he snagged. <laughs> oh no, no, no. He's, 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 he's swiped not. at it. Yeah. Awesome. Another nice one. 
Yeah, he swiped at it right here, like I watched him come at it. Well, I didn't watch him. I saw him pop up out of nowhere at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm back there with you somewhere. There's fish. Another nice one. I enjoy jerk throwing jerk baits because they're uh, they're you know an interactive lure. They're a lure that you have to work. You can't just like cast out and reel back. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get actually do something. And they work off of the bass's instincts. You know, he just saw that lure die. Die, he's got to go eat it. It could be a four-pounder now. Look how angry he is. He just realized he got caught. Yeah, well, you just don't take, hit your mouth like that, you'd be angry too. <laughs> well, he hit it, and I brought him like straight up out of the water. Like, I don't think he had a chance to fight because it's too quick. There's another one. Another one, that one's fat. Another one. Watch. Snap. Yeah. So you start from loose line and you end in loose line. You snap down, snap back. I mean, we can keep fishing if you want, but I'm getting hungry. All right, ready to go. All right, guys, jerk baits. I discussed some of it while I'm fishing. I also want to discuss some of it right now, just in case if I didn't catch it while I was fishing. Um, so let's quickly discuss color. So I like to have a white, uh, opaque, basically what I was throwing, some sort of clearish. Uh, I have several different makes and models of the same colors for different reasons, but some sort of, of clearish, you know, like a natural color. Those two, slightly smaller size. I use that on, on clear water days, or clear, clear water, clear days. I use that white one that I was throwing today on kind of overcast days. I have shad pattern, kind of like a blue herring type color patterns. Um, Deep diving, shallow diving, you don't need to get all this stuff to get into jerk baits. I, I just, my personal preference would be for you to get, or not preference, my personal, uh, I, I guess, suggestion for getting into jerk baits is get something in the 110 millimeter size that's got three hooks, three treble hooks. Um, three hook, you know, my, the only time I really have two hooks is when I'm working with something that's a smaller version. I prefer three hook because I think it's imperative that, well, one, sticky hooks, but two, when bass hit this thing, it's typically when you're in between those, in between the, the jerks, right? And so when it's kind of sitting there, you pop, pop, 
and it's sitting there still, that's when they're going to inhale it. So you may not feel that at all. And he'll inhale it and he'll spit it back out. But if you have super sharp sticky hooks, he gets a mouthful of metal and he's pinned. You got him. Okay, so the only reason I ever try to go down to two hooks is if I have a small jerk bait. Anything above a 90 millimeter is I, I prefer a three uh, treble hook setup. Now size, you want to match the hatch, right? And that kind of goes with the colors too. So fall time, you've got a bunch of smaller bait fish. So I prefer to go to smaller jerk baits. Springtime, the fish that made it through the winter have grown, right? Because none of them were born over the winter. So they've grown, now they're a little bigger. I prefer to go with a bigger jerk bait during springtime. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. It doesn't say a small won't work. Big fish will eat small baits, so sometimes you just got to go small anyway. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, discuss color. You know, one of my favorite colors all around is this color. It's called Alleggy Bone. I don't know why I love it so much, but if I can't get them to bite on anything else, this seems to be the color that I'll go to. Uh, has that chartreuse for the dirty water. Kind of has the... To me, it's just the best overall single color pattern. That's just my preference, though. So doesn't necessarily mean that that's correct. It's just that's correct in my mind. It's my confidence lure. Um, deep diving, shallow diving, naturals, whites, something with chartreuse. Uh, make sure you guys pop these things on slack line. It's got to be slack line. If you do it on tight line and you pop it, it's gonna continue to glide forward. You know, if you if you're just reeling, it works like a crankbait and swims like a crankbait. It's basically a long crankbait with a weight transfer system. Okay, most of these have a weight transfer system that, that you may or may not be able to see in the camera. Make it great for throwing in the wind. But if you're just casting and reeling, chunking and winding, it's just a long skinny jerk or a long skinny crankbait. So slack line popping it, what that does is it causes it to jerk off to the side. Slack line makes it go off to the side. If you if you jerk it off to the side and then tighten back down, it'll correct and face back forward again. You want it to say slack, so when you pop it, it shoots off to the side. You pop it again, it shoots off to the other side. Kind of like walking the dog, but underwater. Okay? Cadence. Whether you want to pop it once, twice, three times, whatever, that's going to be up to you, but it's also up to the fish because sometimes they just won't hit a bait that's being jerked three times. You'll see in this video, I think two seem to be the, the one that I stuck with the most because two worked. Um, the occasional one pop, sometimes it's a two pop. I like to vary it. I don't like to stay one, one particular cadence the whole time anyway. Uh, the length of time that you let it sit between pops. You know, you, you pop it twice and then you let it sit. Well, in the winter time, that sit maybe five, eight, ten seconds. Summertime, not not nearly as long. You know, the, the water's warmed up, the fish are less lethargic, they're more active, they're willing to chase stuff down. Wintertime, they're not going to chase it. So if it's popping and keeps going, they're just going to let it keep going. Summertime, they're willing to chase after it. You can work these things a little faster, cover more water. I like to, to cover more water so you see me reeling faster than I should be. What you should just be doing is pop, pop, and only taking in just a little bit of slack. But since I'm, I got the boat moving the whole time, I have to compensate and reel in that slack also. Not just the slack that was caused for me popping it, but the slack of the, of the boat moving forward, right? So if you're sitting there fishing on the dock, you wouldn't be reeling it in nearly as fast as I am. So the key is to not reel it in. The key is to work this thing on slack line. That's what makes jerk baits jerk baits instead of long crank baits. So when you're practicing to see how to do this, nothing's stopping you from putting out 10, 12 feet of line and just pop it once or twice next to the dock, next to the bank, whatever, so you can see what I'm talking about versus you sweeping and you see that it swims and it keeps maintaining forward or you popping on slack line and you'll see what I'm talking about with the jerking motion 
of a kind of an underwater walking the dog. Okay, that is key. So, so practice equipment. Okay, so I have a hard time with this when a lot of when a lot of people say you know you got to buy this rod and this reel and and all that stuff because, well, I'm six six, so my preference of rod and reel and what works for me may not be the same thing that works for you guys. Personally. Almost all of my rods are seven foot. It doesn't matter what I'm throwing. Almost everything I throw is on a seven foot rod. Um, you know, make do with what you have. Okay. If you can afford a, a fancy specialized rod and reel, then cool. Do what you got to do. If not, improvise, adapt, and overcome. I prefer on this seven foot. Again, because most of my stuff seven foot. Medium heavy, ten to twelve pound line. Um, Gear ratio to me isn't a big deal because all you're doing is reeling in a little bit of slack. You're not, you don't have to gorilla them out of cover because you better not be throwing this in, in trees. You're going to get it stuck, right? There's absolutely nothing that's weedless about this. So, you know, you don't need heavy braid. You don't need any of that stuff. I think you'll be fine with, like I said, 10 to 12 is what I run. I think that is it so if you're new to this channel why don't you hit that subscribe button right down there if you guys enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and hopefully you learned something if you did please drop a comment below and let me know if you guys have any questions please feel free to ask questions also uh, i will gladly answer that i answer every comment that i see so you know feel free to ask away with that said guys hopefully you guys have a wonderful day get on the water be safe and go stick some lips.